All right, this is the dimensional analysis test review. Roughly, I'm doing uh, part E and part F from your dimensional analysis worksheet that we had in class. Otherwise, um, this is on my assignments page if you want just the worksheet itself. And the answers are on the answers and review page that you access this from. So let's get started. We're going to go ahead and do number 16 first, which it has here. And you might want to have your conversion chart. Remember, you'll have that for the test as well. Uh, you won't have yours, but you'll have one that I will provide you. This one says an, a glacier advances this far, 4.8 times 10 to the negative 6 centimeters per second. We want to know how far it will travel, which is centimeter units, if we are going to give it uh, 6.3 times 10 to the 4th seconds to travel. So that's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with the 6.3 times 10 to the 4th seconds. Now, because we have seconds on the bottom of this ratio, we can use that ratio and say it'll move 4.8 times 10 to the negative 6 centimeters in a second. Well, if you have seconds on top and bottom, you can cancel them out and you're now in your centimeter, centimeter unit, excuse me, for how far it's going to travel. So all you have to do is the math in your calculator and you should find out that it will travel 0 0.3 centimeters. The next part of this question ha says, how far will it travel in seven years? Okay, kind of drew all over that, but seven years. And they want us to, again, express it in centimeters. Well, we're going to start with the time we are given, which is seven years. The only time unit that we have in our ratio, which is circled in black there, is centimeters over seconds. So we have to get years and seconds to match. So we're going to have to go from years to seconds. So we know for one year... There's 365 days. For one day, there's 24 hours. And then for one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. I'm going into my other answer from a minute ago, so let me erase. There we go. And I'll write it back up here. This was point, or 0 0.3 centimeters. All right. And so now I'll be able to cancel out my years, my days, back down here, my hours, and I'm in seconds. But I want to be able to use my ratio from earlier, so I'll use my 4.8 times 10 to the negative 6 centimeters per second, cancel out my seconds, now I'm in centimeters. When I do the math on this one, I get an answer of 1,000. 59.61 centimeters. It's important that you realize you use the ratio that they give you, or the mixed units, and that you can flip it upside down or however you want to use it to make it work to cancel out. So let's go on to 17. 17, Ed is near, sets his starship for 6.9 times 10 to the 9th meters per second. This is the rate that we're going to use. Okay, this is our conversion factor that we can have one second over 6.9 times 10 to the 9th meters or 6.9 times 10 to the 9 meters over a second. We want to know how far he's going to travel, so we want to know about meters if we give him one day to travel. So we're going to start with one day, but we want days in our time unit to match, so we need to change days to seconds. Convert. You know, one day is 24 hours. You know that one hour is 3,600 seconds. You can then use the rate that they gave you of 6.9 times 10 to the 9th meters per second. That'll allow you to cancel out the seconds. You can cancel out your hours, your days, and you're left with meters for your answer, which is how far did he travel. And you find out that it is, I believe, let me double check, I have it written somewhere else. 5.96 times 10 to the 14th meters. Don't forget, round to two numbers after the decimal. Go ahead and uh, use scientific notation if it's a million number or higher. And also make sure you include your units. 
going on to protect her two-wheeler, her new two-wheeler. Rhonda is going to buy a length of chain, and she finds that its linear density is, so here is our ratio that we have. If she wants to keep its weight below 1.7 pounds, what length of chain does she want? So we want to find feet, okay? We're starting out with 1.7 pounds because we don't want anything higher than that. Well, we know that for every 0 0.9 pounds, which I'm going to put on the bottom so I can cancel this out, top and bottom, she has one foot. So we're now in our length measurement. We've canceled out our pounds. And all we have to do is the math here. So for number 18, our answer should be 1.89 feet. Easy enough. A banana slug crawls at this rate. Our rates are going to be our um, conversion factors, okay? We want to know how many seconds, so we want to know our time, it'll take if we want him to travel one centimeter. So we're going to start with one centimeter because that's how far we want him to travel. We know that for every one second, he only moves 0 0.18 centimeters. So we just took our rate and flipped it, okay, because we can do that with conversion factors. They can be two ways. And now we're in seconds, and we'll do our math and find out that it's going to take him 5.56 seconds to travel one centimeter. He's a really slow slug. Moving on. Number 20, at the bottom of Lake Conroe, the lake pressure is found to be pounds per square inches, this many pounds per square inches. We want to know the surface area. Surface area is square inches units. And we're going to start out with a pound of force. So we start off with a pound of force. And we say, okay, for every 1.68 times 10 to the fourth pounds, which we know is our pressure, there's one inch, one square inch. Well, we can cancel out our pounds. We can do our math, and we find out that surface area. Yeah, so the animal would only have to be 5.95 times 10 to the negative 5 square inches, so it's pretty small to fill a pound, all right, if the pressure's that much. All right? So again, you can take your ratio that they give you or their rate, and you can go ahead and have either one of those on top, um, depending on what you want to cancel out. A plastic tube allows a flow of 15 cubic centimeters per second. How long will it take to fill a 211 cubic centimeter bottle of water? All right, here's our rate. Here's what we want to start with, and we're looking for how long. So long is time, so we're looking for seconds. All right, looking for those seconds. So if I have 211, centimeters cubed that I want to start with. My ratio is 15 centimeter cubed for every second. So I also know that in one second, it only fills 15 cubic centimeters. So I can cancel out my cubic centimeters. 211 divided by 15 is going to give me 14.07 seconds. That's my answer. Moving on. Number 22, a man's average speed is 4.86 miles per hour. So I'm going to write that, 4.86 miles over hours because I want it to be expressed in centimeters per second. So I'm going to do the centimeters first. I'm going to go from miles to centimeters. So the first thing that I will need to do is say that for one mile, I have 5,280 feet. Okay, that conversion I have. Because I don't have anything that goes straight from a mile to a centimeter, which that would be kind of, you know, fast. I then need to find something that relates feet to centimeters closer. So the next thing I have is an inch. 
inch. So I'm going to say for every one foot, there's 12 inches. I'll cancel out my feet. Then I also know, due to our conversion chart, that handy dandy chart, for every one inch, I have 2.54 centimeters. So I can stop here because now I am in centimeters. So now I want to work on the seconds part. I have hours. So I'm going to go down here and just keep continuing. I know for every one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. That's an easy single step conversion. You could do the hours to minutes and minutes to seconds. It's going to be the same thing. Hours has to be on top and bottom to cancel. Now I can stop here because I have seconds on the bottom. So now it's just the math. 4.86 times 5,280 times 12 times 2.54 divided by 3,600. You're going to get an answer of 217.26 centimeters per second. All right. That concludes part E. Now I'm going to go on to part F. Okay, and we'll just keep continuing with whether it's a conversion or a problem with formulas. What is the angular velocity, which they want us to you to find radians per second of the second hand of a clock? Well, the surface of a clock is a circle. So we're going to say that it makes one revolution. The next thing to think about is how long does it take for the second hand to make a single revolution? Well, it's the second hand and there's 60 seconds for it to go around. So we're going to write that on the bottom. Well, because of the fact that I'm in revolutions, I need to go to radians. But I'm already in seconds, so I won't have to do anything to the bottom unit. I just have to change revolutions to radians. On our formula or on our conversion chart, it says that one revolution is two pi radians. So that cancels out my revolutions, and I'll now be able to say two times pi divided by 60 is going to give me 0 0.10 radians per second. Notice I'm showing how everything cancels out. I'm always boxing my answer. I have two numbers after the decimal, and I have units with all my answers because units are important as well. The next one, I still want to find radians per second, but this time it's for the hour hand. So it's still going to be one revolution, but how long does it take for the hour hand to make an entire revolution? If you think about it, the face of a clock has 12 numbers, one for each hour. So it takes 12 hours for it to get all the way around. So we're going to have to convert both revolutions to radians and hours to seconds. Work one at a time. Let's start with the revolutions. I know for every one revolution, it's 2 pi radians. Now in radians, I can stop. Revolutions cancels out. Then I have hours on the bottom. So I know for every one hour, I have to put it on top so it can cancel out. I want to go to seconds, so I'm going to use the conversion. 3,600 seconds and done. Radians on top, seconds on bottom. 2 times pi divided by 12 divided by 3,600 will tell me that the angular velocity is 1.45 times 10 to the negative 4 radians per second. All right. Kind of cool, huh? A block of material has the dimensions of. These dimensions right here are going to allow us to solve for volume because volume of a block is length times width times height. And I just expect you to know that, all right? We're also told that its mass is 566 grams. We're then asked to solve for its density. So density has the formula mass divided by volume. It's on the basic tax formula chart. You'll always have access to that chart on every single test that you have. So. Just be aware of that. This particular formula for volume is not on the formula chart, so you do need to be aware of that, okay? You're just expected to know that um, across the board. If not, 
they give it to you in problems. But we're going to go ahead and list my variables because that's what I do. <clears throat> we have mass is 566 grams. We have volume, which we're going to say is 4 times 7 times 3, which gives me 84 centimeters cubed. And now I'm going to solve for density because that's what they want me to solve for. So I'm going to say 566 grams divided by 84 centimeters cubed will give me an answer of 6.74 grams per centimeter cubed. Got to keep those units. And you got in the centimeters cubed because I multiplied centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. That's where the centimeters cubed came from. Okay? Very easy. A sphere of metal measures 4.6 centimeters in radius. Okay, so that's the radius. It has a density of 7.9 grams per cubic centimeter. They want to know the mass. Again, we're going to go back to our formula density equals mass over volume. We could go ahead and cross multiply that and say that mass equals density times volume. And we get the same, we can find it, solve for what we want to look for. Now, I want to solve for mass. I'm told my density is 7.9 grams over centimeters cubed, but I'm not given my volume. I'm told that the volume formula for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and I am told r, so I can substitute 4.6 in for r. When I do that math, I will be able to find out that the sphere, okay, has, hold on, roughly a volume of, 407.72, and this is centimeters cubed. Now, when we multiply the 407.72 centimeters cubed, and I keep this whole number in my calculator, even though I write part of it down, and my density of 7.9, when I multiply all this together, I find out that the mass of this particular sphere of metal is... 3,220.99 grams, okay? The reason for that is, is because, let me erase something here for a minute. I didn't write everything I needed to. 7.9 grams over centimeters cubed. Your centimeters cubed was able to cancel out because it's on top and bottom. That's why your units was in grams, all right? Last but not least, we want to find mass of a gallon of paint thinner if it has a density of this. So we have mass equals our question mark, our volume is a gallon, and our density is 0 0.74 grams cubic centimeters. Here's the big kicker on this problem. These units don't match for volume. So we have to make them match before we can solve for mass, saying mass is density times volume. All right. So let's convert first. One gallon is four quarts. Okay. Four quarts is 3.5. 788 liters. Now, I could have skipped the four quarts because of the fact that it's on top and bottom. It's going to cancel out anyway. But most of you probably didn't know that a gallon was 3.788 liters. So just FYI, I'd make sure that you knew your gallon was four quarts at least if you don't. All right. But now I need to get from liters to centimeters cubed. Well, on our conversion chart, it says that one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter. Since that's the case, I can just get from liters to milliliters, roughly, and say that for one liter, I have a thousand centimeters cubed because it's the same thing as a milliliter. Cancel out your liters, cancel out your quarts, cancel out your gallons. Do your math, multiply, divide, and you should find out 
that for the volume, you have 3,788 cubic centimeters. You can then take that number, multiply it by your density, which is 0 0.74 grams over centimeters cubed. Cancel out your centimeters cubed, and you find out that you have 2,803.12 grams of paint thinner. All right. Problems aren't hard. They look wordy. Sometimes y'all get confused, but they're doable. All right. Study for your test. Yeah, I think you're well prepared, but do extra problems. Double check your answers. Come see me before or after school if you need help. And good luck.